What is up guys? This is Steve with Lugaway Junk Removal and Demolition here in the great state of Massachusetts. In this video today, we are going to talk dump trucks. I'm going to bring you by my dump truck, aka the Luggernaut, aka the Breadwinner, aka the Cheddar Receiver, the Receiver of Cheddar, the F350 dump truck. Now, for everyone who's reached out through my Instagram page, this video is going to answer all of your questions regarding my setup, how you can build it um, on your own, those of you who don't want a metal can and prefer the rack body uh, because all the wood is replaceable, the sides, the floorboards, everything. Um, all those questions will be answered. We'll do a walk around um, of my truck. I'll show you how I built all of that up. But first things first, let's get this question out of the way. Why did I not buy the classic junk removal truck, the Isuzu NPR? Uh, I only have really one reason uh, for it, and it's because the 350s are far superior in the winter elements. Now, everyone's gonna have their own opinion on the purchases they make for their business. Um, you wanna make the purchase that is right for your business. Uh, there's pros to the 350, there's cons to the 350, there's pros to the NPR, there's cons to the NPR. The biggest con for the NPR, in my opinion, was that it does not do well in the snow. Um, obviously, being in Massachusetts, being in the East Coast, um, we get a fair amount of snow for a number of months uh, throughout the year. So that was a big factor for me. I have experienced driving the NPRs in the snow and they sucked. I mean, I, we couldn't even you know, move them on flat ground without shoveling paths for the wheels. You get a driveway with a couple inches, slight grade on it. Uh, you're not getting into the driveway. You're slipping and sliding all around. Um, so that was the reason I did not, um, I did not move forwards with an NPR. I was looking at them. Um, but it's it just wasn't for me. I didn't I don't want to deal with that and I don't have to deal with that Which is great. The 350 um, Never has any problems in the snow. I did get four-wheel drive in it um, Which is not an option in the NPRs in the United States um, But we haven't really used four-wheel drive. We used it once to get ourselves out of a, a pretty deep ditch But that was it so there's pros and cons to both. Like I said before, you need to buy what's gonna work best for your business. So that was a deciding factor for me. Um, I also like having a hood in front of me. I feel more comfortable driving it. Um, and you know, that is what it is. Um, pros to the NPR though. You don't have the front there. So you can get in and out of tighter spaces. You don't have that three or four feet of space where the engine is. Come on, lady. These freaking people, dude. Um, you have a, a better turning radius in the NPRs. Um, without a doubt, that is a 100% fact. Uh, not an issue for us, though. We do a shitload of work in the city of Boston, and there is some tight spaces in there. Um, but regardless, you're gonna be have you're gonna have to you know be pulling an Austin Powers, you know front back front back front back to get into these places either way so whether it takes me you know i got to do that five times in the 350 or four times in an npr not a deciding factor for me um so you got that um a lot of guys say it's easier to drive the nprs uh it really depends. I mean, if you're worried about new guys coming on and having trouble driving the truck, I mean, they need to be trained either way. So, I mean, that can and, and can be a deciding factor. Um, from my experience, I don't know about the newer NPRs, but on the highway, they absolutely suck. They're not super difficult to control, but, I mean, you're constantly driving like that like you're in a movie or something just to keep the thing um, in line and where um, another reason I really like the 350 is that it is a much smoother ride than the NPR on the uh, Zuzu's the NPR the NRR which is the diesel version um, which allows you to carry a greater load um, 
you're sitting right on top of the axle. So any bump you go over, you feel it. The 350 is a super smooth ride. Um, so that was another uh, factor for me. Like I said before, you, you're gonna make um, a purchase for your company based on um, based on your needs. Um, if they're right next to each other, if you're like, there's no difference between the NPR and the 350, the only difference for me is the look and you want the NPR because you like the look of it or you want the 350 because you like the look of it, then by all means, go and buy whatever one you want. But do not buy a truck based on the look. Um, you don't wanna buy a 350 and work in the city and be like, fuck, I should've gotten the NPR. This is a nightmare. Um, and vice versa. You don't wanna get an NPR and you know say, uh, you know, the area I'm in, the streets suck and I'm constantly bouncing around and I got coffee cups flying all over the place and my cell phone's flying out of the thing and whatever. So you're gonna make the purchase that's correct for your business. Uh, for me, it was a 350. So I'll bring you by, I'll show you how we uh, we got the, the, the boards bolted on there. Um, and I'll show you how you can build up uh, the body that I have, the rack body, also called the steak body. It's not a metal can. Um, I'll show you how you guys can um, can build that up as well. So we'll uh, we'll be over there soon. All right, guys, we are at the dump truck. This is not normally where we park, but there's some issues with the other area we're at. So we're working with what we got. It's not a bad spot to be at. A lot of room kind of pine needles all over the fucking place, but it is what it is. So, let's do the walk around. This is the F350 Dually Gasser XL Trim Rack Body. You're gonna wanna get a truck that is XL Trim or the base level trim because it is a work truck. You're gonna be beating this thing up. You're gonna be you know, you're not gonna treat it like crap, but shit happens to it. You're coming down someone's driveway, whatever, you got the bushes on the side, they start scraping against the, uh, scraping against the cab. You can probably see it, they're all over this thing. You can't really see it in the video. Um, another reason why I got a white chassis, but, uh, sorry, white cab, um, but you don't wanna get something that, you, that you're gonna be babying. Um, because it's just going to drive you absolutely insane. So I'll show you how we put all this stuff on here. I'm just doing a little walk around. So these boards, imagine those just gone. So when you buy a rack body like this, it's just steak and the racks. Um, these are all welded together. It's one piece. Those come off. So you can technically make this thing a flatbed if you wanted to. Um, but let me show you the interior. So we got heated mirrors, interior's nice. We got cup holders there, we got the storage there. We put the WeatherTech floor mats in here and they are unreal. They snap in, um, unreal. Definitely invest in floor mats. It's either these or the, uh, the Husky whatever floor line or whatever they're called. Um, there's I've seen guys that have trucks that are super old that are have the the floorboards here are are like rotted through you can like see the ground so invest in those this is view from the driver's seat um I don't have the key on me but this screen here you toggle with the uh this here this controls the radio um you get the you know voice through the truck. Uh, you can toggle through fuel mileage, um, you know tire pressure, all that good stuff. Um, pretty basic center console. You got the USB down there. You do have this. You can charge stuff, but only 110 volt. You can see. Um, so you're not you can like charge your drills or your sawzall or like any of that. So it's it's actually pretty fucking useless. Um, more storage in here. You obviously got the glovey. Um, we got storage in this center seat. Masks because of COVID. Big bag of change. Buy yourself something nice. Advil. Everyone's backs are hurting them. 
So you got storage there. This thing goes up. So that's your third seat. That's your middle seat. Uh, it's definitely tight, especially if you're rolling around with some big boys. But uh, you do have the option. More storage oh, is down here. And these things actually flip out. Um, but when that's down, if you have the head on, you can't really use those and whatever. So, but obviously we haven't used this ever. Um, but you have the option. So it's always good to have the option. So this comes down with that lever. Perfect. Behind the seats, got more than enough space. Usually throw a backpack back here, a cooler, a jacket, sweatshirt, whatever. Uh, we got yard signs and a sledgehammer back there. Sledgehammer should not be back there. Um, but we have a, um, what's it called? Underneath here is the, the fire extinguisher and the, uh, the, like the, the triangles. You got to have all this stuff to be, um, to be compliant. Um, this right here. So I keep this right under the seat. This is for the body to go up and down. So I keep this right under the seat. Um, goes up, goes down. Now we're working with a rugby scissor lift hoist. Um, I just cleaned under here a little bit. I haven't seen that hydraulic fluid tank that clean in like a year. Um, I honestly couldn't tell if I needed to add fluid or not, so I had to clean that bad boy. Um, all right, that's good enough. So anytime you're doing work underneath here, you're going to want to put that bad boy up. And that is so that if this falls down, you're supposed to have this down sitting in this when you're doing any work. Um, it's hard to get to some of the grease fittings, so we just keep this up and, you know, God forbid the body falls down, the hydraulics give out. Um, that's to prevent you from getting your fucking head snapped off. Uh, so that's that. Grease zerks there, there, they're everywhere. Got them back there. Any point where you kind of see movement, they're going to be. Um, and it tells you to grease it every three months. We do it once a month. Um, not, not adding too much, but. So here is your nightmare. This is the body up alarm, the most annoying sound in the world. And will give you a heart attack if it randomly goes off while you're driving. So this snapped off. This is supposed to be like that long. Um, this thing snapped off immediately after inspection. We went over um, uneven surface. The body kind of moved a little bit and it just snapped it off, whatever. I disconnected it here. Um, so for those of you who don't know, that sound is the most annoying sound in the world. And that should be red when your body's up, but that just kind of the light gives out. Um, that sound is the most annoying sound in the world can't uh you can't even think when you hear that sound so um uh yeah i just needed to <laughs> i need to disconnect that asap i always do uh so this as you can see is going down very slowly this is a gravity down body um some other trucks other hoists uh have battery powered so it's connected through the through the vehicle and it will come down a lot quicker um this came like this i don't mind it it's safer this way and i do believe they're making most of the newer ones um this way uh for safety precautions um but it is what it is definitely slow but gets the job done so that's the inside um it's really nice it's spacious the leather comes stock with the XL trim, um, 14,000 GVWR, which is the gross vehicle weight rating. Um, so you take the 14,000 minus the empty weight of the truck, which I was just at the dump today. It was like 9596. Um, so you're supposed to legally be able to carry uh, two tons in these trucks, which is 4,000 pounds. Can you put more in there? Yes. Have we overloaded the truck to 5,000 pounds in the back? Absolutely. Does it drive like a boat down the street? Absolutely. Has it scared the shit out of me trying to come to a stop when it's overloaded? 
absolutely which is why you do not want to overload these things they're not rated to take on that much more weight the brakes aren't rated the leaf springs aren't rated um you you just want to be compliant with what your vehicle can legally hold to be safe dot pulls you over um you're screwed either way if you're overweight but you just want to be safe if you have a load in the back there that's super super heavy um you take your eyes off the road and you got to slam the brakes on you're not going to be able to stop the thing in time if it's overloaded it's not meant to stop six thousand pounds it's meant to stop four thousand pounds in the back so just know that um that's why we bought this thing i'll show you this thing while we're here um, this is the PJ DM uh, 14 foot uh, dump trailer, four feet high sides. Uh, this thing holds 10,000 pounds. It's 4,000 empty and it's an absolute beast. So we do a lot of our concrete demo, any type of work that requires the removal of dense, heavy material, we use this for lower to the ground um, so it's obviously easier to load it has ramps so we can you know put equipment back there um, the ramps come out right here and on that side pulling a bobcat or a mini excavator in there um, yeah but that's that's why we, we all I also bought this to offload into um, our transfer station hours suck so we hit the dump like I don't know, three or four times a day, but they're not open on Mondays. We can't go in on Saturdays, and they do half days on Fridays. So this purchase was great because we can offload into it, and we can also use um, use this as you know something to um, do do the heavier heavier work with. Um, all right, so back to the 350. So the way that we put this wood on here is these bolts. So they go all the way down. One, two, three, four. There's five on the top, six on the top, six on the bottom. Um, so you're going to, from the outside, from here, you're going to drill through the metal slow and with a lot of force. Um, it was much, much harder than I anticipated when we were doing it. Once you're through all of them, you're good to go. Then you line up the, the uh, wood, you draw a little circle on, on the uh, area you need to uh, drill through for the wood. You put a bolt in coming this way, secure it with a nut going that way, and you're good to go. We did the same thing with the, uh, with the signs, and I'll show you that in a second. So when I mentioned beforehand is that you can take these off if you really wanted to. That comes out right there. So this can be a flatbed if you want. Um, I have no reason to do that, but if you want to, landscapers do it sometimes. They'll take the sides off so they can access material, whatever. So this is the wooden floorboard I was telling you about. These planks are replaceable, and that is another huge factor for me because I didn't want appliances flying around the back. You're dumping them. They pierce a hole in it. I didn't know what was going to happen, so um, it happened at my my job before I started this so I didn't want to deal with that um, welding and whatnot so you'll see these are the bolts and it's on both sides and in the back as well you slide those through secure it with a nut and a washer on the other side and your gravy so these are for the billboard you can see in there there's nuts holding the billboard on um, you can almost see the outline of it. Uh, and we tighten these every once in a while. I mean, at least once a month. Um, you got downtime before you start the day or after the day. 
because um, we've definitely lost some nuts. There's probably one missing, like, yeah, like right there. So um, the goal is to obviously not have that flying off <laughs> on the highway or something. Um, this metal grate is awesome. I love this because we get the rear view in the cab. So you can see whatever's in the back. You can see if you got a smaller load back here, you can see if shit's flying around. Um, we don't have the automatic tarp, so the only time we're really tarping it is if we're worried about something flying out. Um, so this tarping system that we have, world class, very straightforward. Roll it up, whichever which way you need to, lock it in place, you're good to go. Um, I didn't want the automatic tarping system. I obviously didn't want to bolt it to the sides here um, or to the rack. It seems like a lot of guys in our area that do have it, it always is fucked up. Um, and I just, you know, I didn't want to, didn't want to do that. Top of this is dirty as fuck. We did have a battle royale in these trees above us here the other week. And we did find a dead squirrel in here. So if you know anyone to invoice for a dead squirrel, let me know. Because we do have a minimum and someone's getting charged. Just saying. Just... All right, guys, that is the truck. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, check out some of our other videos. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. video. I hope that it was somewhat educational for you if you're on the fence of what truck to buy. If you have any questions, put them in the comment below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.